So recently my Xerox DocuPrint N2125 broke down with a fuser failure and contrary to what I show on YouTube most of the time I can't just break stuff but also repair some things. So I'll show you how I repaired the printer in this video. So before starting with anything, the first thing we should do is take a look in the service manual. There are two reasons why I really like these office type printers. One is because they have excellent Linux support and the other is that they usually have service manuals available and those are invaluable when repairing a printer. The error we are seeing is U4 fuser failure and we look in the table of contents to see where this error is described. It's in 224. So what 224 tells us in RAP18 is basically turn it off and turn it on again. And is the problem still there? In my case, yes, it is. So we go to RAP31. RAP31 is basically the section which tells us how to debug the fuser itself. So the first thing we need to do is get the fuser out of the printer. And this is described in REP6.2. Then we can do some checks with the fuser itself to see if it's working properly. So as you can see, the first thing that I do is turn the printer around and then I remove the duplexer unit. One might or might not be installed in your printer. And afterwards I unmount the screws that hold the fuser in place. And then the fuser can just slide out. So there are two checks in RAP31 mentioned. One is measuring the resistance of the NTC, which needs to be between 7K and 380 kilo ohms. And as you can see, the resistance is well within the acceptable range in my case. I also checked the resistance of the fuser heat rod, which for the 220 volt version is between pin one and pin three. Unfortunately, I recorded that out of frame, but the resistance for the fuser heat rod was 7 ohms in my case. The manual says that this should be below 5 ohms, but I'm guessing that this refers to the 110 volt version and that it's okay if this resistance is a bit higher for the 220 volt version. Since both resistances of the fuser heat rod and the NTC were okay directly at the fuser, I proceeded with the instructions given in RAP31. Those are to open the left interface cover and check those both connections at the PCB side. I first removed the two screws that hold the right side of the left plastic cover in place. And below that is a metal plate which is held in by six screws which I removed. This leaves the PCBs exposed where our fuser connectors go to. As indicated by the service manual, I measured the resistance of J27 pins 1 and 2 and the resistance of J11 pins 1 and 3 to check if the NTC resistance and the heater rod resistance was correct. As you can see in the video, both are in spec. So the NTC resistance is around 200 kilo ohms and the heater rod resistance is around seven ohms in my case. So this left me a bit puzzled because in the static case, everything was in spec, yet this part seemed to consistently fail in my unit. Unfortunately, right around that time, my camera cut out and the interesting debugging that happened is not shown on video. But since what happened in my unit could also happen in other printers, I thought this was a worthwhile video, even though the interesting part is not on film. So I thought I'd show the interesting parts of how I debugged this problem in theory. Basically, what the fuser is, is an NTC, which is a temperature dependent resistor the hotter it gets, 
the smaller the resistance gets of around 200 kilo ohms. And that one is in one case together with basically a lamp. It's basically a hel halogen lamp of 500 watts. And they both have contacts at the fuser. Those are the ones that we measured first and go over here and go over here. So we checked here and here and checked that the resistance here was around 7 ohms and the resistance here was around 200 kilo ohms, which is all fine. So then we opened up the left side of the printer and exposed these contacts J27 and J11 and measured at those contacts to check if the wiring to the fuser was wrong. And also we had here 200 kilo ohms and we measured down here 7 ohms. So everything was working as expected. But still the error continued to show up. So something had to be wrong with the unit. And there really isn't much that can go wrong. So what I did is I cut both wires at this point here. And I connected a 230 volts AC light bulb in parallel to here to be able to see when the fuses actually lit up. And I connected my multimeter up here, measuring the voltage, because in operation, the printer um, measures the resistance of the NTC by using a ADC, which measures the voltage across this resistor. So the values that I got, um, they depend on how the ADC uh, circuit is uh, all laid out, but they give me an indication of what the ADC would read. So when doing this, I could see whether the fuser light bulb was on, indicated by this red line. And I could also measure the voltage across the NTC. And what I saw was this. When I first turned on the printer, the fuser immediately is turned on. And so after some thermal latency, the voltage that is initially about 0.6 volts for my fuser starts to drop, as we expect. So we already know that the fuser is doing its job, it's heating up. So it's heating up, it's heating up, it's heating up, the uh, voltage is going down, the resistance uh, of the NTC is going down. And I saw the curious thing that at uh, 0.06 volts roundabout, the voltage suddenly started to jump up right to 3.3 volts. After the voltage jumped to 3.3 volts, the fuser immediately turned off and it never turned on again back after that. So this basically indicates that the NTC goes open circuit at this point in time, because the 3.3 volts very likely are the supply voltage of the ADC board. And if the resistance is open circuit, it's basically infinite. And this means the full voltage drops over this resistor. So luckily, whenever I disassemble hardware, I tend to keep everything as replacement parts. And from actually one of my previous printer videos, I also um, got the NTC of uh, one of these printers. And as the luck would have it, um, the NTC model is the exact one that is used in my Xerox printer, down to the actual connector that is used to connect it up. The leads were a little bit longer, but that was no problem at all. So I was able to replace the NTC and see how the waveform looks with the replacement NTC. And for my replacement NTC, this is about how the waveform looked. So we started also at 0.6 volt when the device was turned on and the voltage decreased, but it decreased below 0.06 volts, round about to about 0.03 volts where the fuser turned off. So basically the heating was turned off and the temperature started to decrease again. And at 0.04 volts or something like that, the fuser turned back on and it went down again and it turned off and on. So basically what we have here is some temperature regulation. Above a certain voltage threshold on the NTC, the fuser light turns on and below a certain threshold, so when the temperature is too hot, it turns back off again and it basically holds its temperature that it needs to have. So this is the NTC that I removed and that is defective and I've removed the casing of the plug here so we can uh, test if it really is broken. So to test the NTC what I will do now is I've connected it to my multimeter and I'm measuring the resistance of the NTC and I will heat it up using my reflow station. And what we should see is the resistance should drop up to some certain point and then it should suddenly jump to infinite.
This was a bit too quick. I'll demonstrate this again. So as you could see, the NTC resistance dropped to about 27 kilo ohms, and then it suddenly went to infinite, meaning that there is probably some hairline fracture within the NTC circuit itself, which makes it uh, lose its connection uh, above a cer certain temperature, and which ultimately makes the printer go uh, haywire. So from the footage that I do have, I'll try to describe as best as possible how you need to disassemble the fuser to get to the NTC itself. First you need to open the left cover that is secured by two screws and you also need to uh, take care of the wiring harness that is in there. Then you will need to take off the right cover, which is also secured by two screws. When you pry away the right cover a little bit, you can then unscrew the two screws which hold the white and red wire in place. Then you can fully remove the right cover. The red and white cable actually go to the fuser heat rod. Back on the left side, there's also one more screw which holds the fuser heat rod in place. You will also remove that one. Then you can remove the fuser heat rod through the right side. This is uh, some of the footage that is missing in my video. Please make really sure you've removed the fuser heat rod before you open the top cover because you'll damage it otherwise. Afterwards, and that is also missing here, you can just remove the four screws that hold the top cover in place, open the top cover up and you will immediately see the NTC in there. The NTC is also secured by one more screw. So this is the lamp that I soldered parallel to the fuser power supply. I used a energy saving bulb for this because it consumes very little power. Usually I use a 100 watt ballast for certain purposes. But for this I really didn't want to influence the whole operation of the fuser assembly too much. So this was perfect. And here's some spare parts that I collect from various repairs. And you'll also see there's uh, some NTCs that are definitely from other printer disassemblies in here. These are also some heating rods that I collected from other printers and if I measure the specs these actually would also fit my printer. I don't know if they would fit mechanically but from the power that they take and the amount of heat that they give off they should be perfect. So even though my wife sometimes calls me a trash collector um, this is one good example of why you should keep all these spare parts handy. So I hope this is useful to you if you're repairing your own printer and I hope you tune in the next time. Bye!